Under the GDPR, which of the following scenarios would necessitate a data controller to conduct a data protection impact assessment, DPIA? A. Introduction of a new email marketing system targeting existing customers. B. Deployment of a biometric access control system for employee entry into secure areas. C. Annual review of employee satisfaction conducted through anonymous surveys. D. Updating the company website's privacy notice to reflect changes in contact details. Correct answer. B. Explanation. A DPIA is required for data processing operations that are likely to result in a high risk to the rights and freedoms of natural persons. According to GDPR, the deployment of a biometric access control system involves processing sensitive data, biometric data, on a large scale and is a type of systematic monitoring of individuals, thus necessitating a DPIA. The other options either do not process sensitive data on a large scale, are not considered high risk, or do not involve significant changes in data processing activities. In GDPR terms, what distinguishes a legitimate interest as a lawful basis for processing personal data from other bases, and what does it require from data controllers? A. It allows for processing based solely on the economic interests of the data controller. B. Processing under legitimate interest requires explicit consent from the data subject after the processing has begun. C. It necessitates a balancing test where the data controller must assess whether their interests override the interests or fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subjects. D. Legitimate interest is a default basis that can be invoked without any specific conditions or tests. Correct answer, C. Explanation. The legitimate interest basis for processing under GDPR is one that requires a careful balancing test by the data controller. This test assesses whether the controller's legitimate interests in processing the data are overridden by the interests or fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subjects which require protection of personal data. This basis is not as straightforward as consent or contractual necessity and requires thorough documentation and justification to ensure compliance, including consideration of the nature of the data, the impact of processing and protective measures. Under GDPR, how are joint controllers defined and what are their responsibilities? A. Joint controllers are multiple entities that process the same data for different purposes and must independently ensure GDPR compliance. B. Entities that decide together on the purposes and means of processing are considered joint controllers and must delineate their responsibilities in a transparent manner through an arrangement between them. C. Joint controllers are required to merge their operations to ensure a singular data processing protocol, minimizing data subject rights. D. The concept of joint controllers does not exist under GDPR. Each controller is solely responsible for its data processing activities. Correct answer, B. Explanation, GDPR introduces the concept of joint controllers, referring to two or more entities that jointly determine the purposes and means of processing personal data. These entities must enter into an arrangement that precisely reflects their respective roles and relationships regarding data subjects. The arrangement should transparently delineate their responsibilities for complying with GDPR, particularly concerning the exercise of data subjects' rights and their respective duties to provide information. This ensures clarity and accountability, enabling data subjects to understand who is responsible for their data and how to exercise their rights. What does the GDPR stipulate regarding the appointment of a representative by controllers or processors not established in the EU? A. A representative must be appointed in every EU member state where the data subjects whose personal data are processed reside. B. The appointment of a representative is optional and serves as a gesture of good faith for non-EU entities. C. Non-EU established controllers or processors must appoint a representative in one of the EU member states where the data subjects are located unless the processing is occasional, does not include large-scale processing of special categories of data, and is unlikely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of data subjects. D. All non-EU entities processing data of EU residents are exempt from GDPR requirements, including the appointment of a representative. Correct answer, C. Explanation, Article 27 of the GDPR mandates that controllers or processors not established in the EU, but who process personal data of EU residents, 
must appoint a representative within the EU. This requirement aims to facilitate communication between non-EU entities and EU regulatory authorities and data subjects. The representative acts as a point of contact within the EU for matters pertaining to GDPR compliance. However, this obligation does not apply when the processing is occasional, does not include large-scale processing of special categories of data or personal data relating to criminal convictions and offences, and is unlikely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of individuals. How does GDPR address the processing of personal data for archiving purposes in the public interest, scientific or historical research purposes, or statistical purposes under Article 89 to 1? A. It unequivocally prohibits the processing of personal data for these purposes, prioritizing individual privacy. B. Processing is allowed without any specific safeguards as long as it serves a public interest or contributes to research and development. C. It permits such processing, provided that appropriate safeguards are implemented to ensure data privacy and security, including the possibility of pseudonymization and adhering to the principle of data minimization. D. These activities are exempt from GDPR compliance provided they receive endorsement from a recognized public institution or academic entity. Correct answer C. Explanation, Article 89.1, of the GDPR permits the processing of personal data for archiving in the public interest, scientific or historical research purposes, or statistical purposes, subject to the implementation of appropriate safeguards for the rights and freedoms of the data subject. These safeguards must ensure data privacy and security, including measures like pseudonymization, where the processing does not require identification of data subjects, and the adherence to data minimization principles. This provision recognizes the value of such processing activities while ensuring that the privacy and protection of personal data are not compromised. What are the criteria under GDPR for an organization to be mandated to conduct a consultation with the supervisory authority prior to processing, as per Article 36? A. If the organization plans to process data outside the EU, it must consult with the supervisory authority of each member state where data subjects reside. B. Consultation is required if the data protection impact assessment indicates that the processing would result in a high risk in the absence of measures taken by the controller to mitigate the risk. C. Any large-scale processing of sensitive data requires prior consultation regardless of the outcome of a data protection impact assessment. D. Organizations must consult with the supervisory authority annually as a routine compliance check, irrespective of the specific nature or risk level of processing activities. Correct answer B. Explanation Article 36 of the GDPR mandates that the controller consults the supervisory authority prior to processing if a Data Protection Impact Assessment, DPIA, indicates that the processing would result in a high risk if the controller does not take measures to mitigate the risk. This provision ensures that potentially risky processing activities are reviewed and assessed by regulatory bodies before they commence, providing an additional layer of protection for the rights and freedoms of natural persons. How does GDPR address data transfer outside the European Union? particularly to countries not recognized as providing an adequate level of data protection. A. Data transfers are unrestricted, as GDPR applies globally to all organizations processing data of EU residents. B. Transfers are permitted only if the receiving country has been formally recognized by the EU as having adequate data protection laws. C. Transfers can occur if appropriate safeguards are in place, such as binding corporate rules, BCRs, or standard contractual clauses, SCCs, or if specific conditions are met. D. Organizations must obtain explicit consent from each data subject before transferring their data outside the EU, regardless of the receiving country's data protection level. Correct answer. C. Explanation. GDPR places strict conditions on the transfer of personal data outside the EU, especially to countries not deemed by the European Commission to provide an adequate level of data protection. Such transfers are allowed if appropriate safeguards are provided by the data exporter, including binding corporate rules for transfers within a corporate group, standard contractual clauses for transfers between companies, or specific exceptions apply, such as explicit consent from the data subject for the proposed transfer after being informed of the possible risks. 
What is the primary role of Data Protection Impact Assessments, DPIAs, under GDPR, A, to ensure all data processing activities have the necessary legal paperwork, B, to assess the risk levels of data processing activities to the rights and freedoms of natural persons, C, to calculate the financial impact of data breaches for an organization, D, to provide a yearly audit of an organization's data processing activities for regulatory bodies. Correct answer B. Explanation Data Protection Impact Assessments, DPIAs, are a crucial tool under GDPR designed to help organizations identify, assess, and mitigate the risks associated with data processing activities, especially those that pose high risks to the rights and freedoms of individuals. DPIAs are proactive measures that ensure data processing is conducted safely and in compliance with GDPR, emphasizing the protection of personal data from the outset. Under GDPR, what constitutes a lawful basis for processing personal data? A. The individual's consent and the organization's need to process data for operational purposes. B. The processing is necessary for compliance with a legal obligation to protect the vital interests of the data subject or another person for the performance of a task carried out in the public interest or in exercising official authority vested in the controller. C. Any situation where the data subject is unable to provide consent due to age or incapacity. D. Processing based solely on the organization's financial interest. Correct answer B. Explanation GDPR specifies several lawful bases for processing personal data, ensuring that such activities are justified and transparent. These include consent, contractual necessity, compliance with legal obligations, protection of vital interests, tasks carried out in the public interest or exercise of official authority, and legitimate interests pursued by the data controller or a third party, provided these interests do not override the fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subject. Which of the following best describes the right to be forgotten under GDPR? A. Data subjects have the right to have their data erased if it's no longer necessary for the purpose it was collected. B. Data subjects can request deletion of their data for any reason, without providing justification. C. Organizations must automatically erase personal data after a set period, regardless of the data subject's wishes. D. This right allows data subjects to erase their digital footprint entirely from the internet. Correct answer A. Explanation. The right to be forgotten, also known as the right to erasure, entitles individuals to have their personal data deleted by the data controller under specific circumstances. These include situations where the data is no longer necessary for the purpose it was originally collected or processed, the individual withdraws consent, or there's no legitimate ground for the processing. This right is not absolute and must be balanced against other rights and obligations. How does GDPR define sensitive personal data and what additional protections are afforded to it? A. All personal data is considered sensitive under GDPR, receiving the highest level of protection. B. Sensitive personal data includes details about an individual's financial status, receiving additional encryption. C. Sensitive personal data encompasses special categories of data such as racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious beliefs, genetic and biometric data, where processing requires stricter conditions. D. Sensitive personal data is any information that can be used to directly or indirectly identify a person, requiring user consent for processing. Correct answer, C. Explanation GDPR identifies sensitive personal data as special categories of personal data that reveal racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious or philosophical beliefs, trade union membership, genetic data, biometric data for uniquely identifying a natural person, data concerning health, or data concerning a natural person's sex life or sexual orientation. This type of data is subject to additional protections, and its processing is generally prohibited unless specific conditions are met, such as explicit consent or necessity for the protection of vital interests. What implications does the GDPR have for the use of automated decision-making processes, including profiling, a GDPR categorically prohibits all forms of automated decision-making and profiling. B. Individuals have the right not to be subject to a decision based solely on automated processing, including profiling. If the decision produces legal effects concerning them 
or similarly significantly affects them, except under specific conditions. C. Automated decision-making is permitted without restrictions, provided that it is part of a contractual agreement with the data subject. D. Organizations can use automated decision-making freely, but must disclose the logic involved and the significance and envisaged consequences of such processing to data subjects. Correct answer. B. Explanation. GDPR provides individuals with the right not to be subject to decisions based solely on automated processing, including profiling, that have a legal or similarly significant effect on them. Exceptions exist, such as when automated decision-making is necessary for entering into or performing a contract, authorised by EU or member state law, or based on the individual's explicit consent. In these cases, organizations must implement suitable measures to safeguard the data subject's rights and freedoms and legitimate interests. What obligations does GDPR place on organizations regarding data breaches? A. Organizations must notify the relevant supervisory authority within 72 hours of becoming aware of a data breach, unless the breach is unlikely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of natural persons. B. Organizations are required to notify the public within 24 hours of any data breach, regardless of the breach's severity. C. Data breaches only need to be reported if they involve sensitive personal data. DGDPR requires organizations to report data breaches only if requested by data subjects. Correct answer. A. Explanation. GDPR imposes strict requirements on organizations to report data breaches. Organizations must notify the relevant supervisory authority within 72 hours of becoming aware of a breach, provided the breach is likely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of natural persons. This rapid response is critical to managing the breach effectively and minimizing potential harm. In cases where the breach poses a high risk to individuals, the organization must also inform those affected without undue delay. Under GDPR, How are decisions made by supervisory authorities regarding fines for non-compliance communicated to entities outside the European Economic Area, EEA? And what mechanisms ensure their enforceability? A. Decisions are communicated via international law enforcement agencies, relying on mutual legal assistance treaties to ensure enforceability. B. Supervisory authorities directly notify the non-EA entity and fines are automatically enforceable under international law. C. Fines are communicated through designated representatives in the EU and enforceability is secured through binding corporate rules, BCRs, that include provisions for penalties. D. Entities outside the EEA must appoint an EU representative who receives such communications. Enforceability is facilitated through international cooperation frameworks and adequacy decisions that may include reciprocal enforcement of fines and penalties. Correct answer, D. Explanation GDPR mandates that entities not established in the EU, but subject to its jurisdiction due to processing activities related to offering goods or services to, or monitoring the behaviour of EU data subjects, appoint a representative within the EU. This representative acts as a point of contact for supervisory authorities, including for communications regarding non-compliance and fines. The enforceability of these decisions outside the EU relies on international cooperation mechanisms, such as adequacy decisions which might include agreements on reciprocal enforcement of fines and penalties, or on other legal mechanisms that ensure the effectiveness of GDPR's extraterritorial provisions. Under GDPR, how is the responsibility for data breaches that involve multiple data controllers jointly determined, and what are the implications for data subjects seeking redress? A. Each data controller is individually and fully responsible for the entire breach, allowing data subjects to seek full compensation from any controller involved. B. Responsibility is apportioned based on the percentage of data each controller was processing, with data subjects required to claim compensation proportionally from each. C. Joint controllers must designate a lead controller to take full responsibility for any breaches, simplifying the process for data subjects. D. Joint controllers are jointly and severally liable for the entire breach, meaning data subjects can seek compensation for the full amount of their damages from any of the controllers, who then must seek contribution from the other controllers involved. Correct answer. D. 
explanation under GDPR in cases of joint controllership where multiple entities are jointly responsible for the determination of the means and purposes of processing, they are jointly and severally liable for any breaches. This provision ensures that data subjects can seek and obtain full compensation for the damages caused by processing operations that infringe on the regulation from any one of the joint controllers. The joint controllers involved are then responsible for determining among themselves the portions of the compensation to be paid by each based on their respective levels of responsibility for the damage caused by the breach. This mechanism is designed to protect the interests of data subjects, providing them with a straightforward path to obtaining redress. Under GDPR, in what situation is a legitimate interest assessment, LIA, most critical for justifying processing activities? A. When processing is necessary for the performance of a contract to which the data subject is party. B. When the processing involves personal data collected from publicly available sources. C. When relying on legitimate interest as the lawful basis for processing, particularly in cases where the interests, rights and freedoms of the data subject could potentially override the interests pursued by the data controller. D. When personal data is processed for direct marketing purposes, as legitimate interest is always the lawful basis for such processing. Correct answer C. Explanation. A legitimate interest assessment, LIA, is particularly crucial when a data controller intends to rely on legitimate interest as the lawful basis for processing under GDPR. This assessment helps to ensure that the controller's legitimate interests do not override the fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subjects, especially regarding their personal data. The LIA involves a balancing test to evaluate these factors, making it an essential process for justifying processing activities under this lawful basis. This is especially important in situations where it's not immediately clear that the controller's interests would naturally outweigh the data subject's rights. GDPR introduces the concept of pseudonymization as a data protection technique. Which statement accurately reflects its role and requirements under the regulation? A pseudonymization is considered a fully compliant alternative to anonymization, completely relieving the data controller of all GDPR obligations concerning the pseudonymized data. B. Pseudonymization is a reversible process that must allow the attribution of pseudonymized data to specific data subjects when necessary, provided adequate safeguards are in place to prevent unauthorized re-identification. C. Once data has been pseudonymized, it is no longer considered personal data under GDPR as it cannot be attributed to a specific data subject without the use of additional information. D. Pseudonymization is required for all personal data processed under GDPR, without exception to ensure a baseline level of security and privacy. Correct answer. B. Explanation pseudonymization is defined under GDPR as the processing of personal data in such a manner that the personal data can no longer be attributed to a specific data subject without the use of additional information, provided that such additional information is kept separately and is subject to technical and organizational measures to ensure non-attribution. This process is reversible under controlled conditions to allow for the data to be reattributed to data subjects if necessary, such as for the purposes of